Critics had some things to say about this as and well. And if Ebert can go fuck himself. <laughs> history, men have formed secret societies based upon loyalty, fraternity, and one unbreakable rule. No girls allowed. Now, one such institution Where he and woman hate is in serious jeopardy. Rascals. Universal Pictures invites you to meet Alfalfa. Finger roll, finger roll. Spanky. Let her in. Darla. You have the sophistication, I'm waiting, of a woman of 12. Buckwheat. Quick, what's the number for 911? Froggy. What the high sign? Wrong sign, Porky. Stymie. If you were my kids, I'd punish you. If we were your kids, we could punish ourselves. And Petey. <laughs> These kids <laughs> have their differences. <laughs> but when love is in the air. This is a song about a tragic romance. I'm going to put that fool out of his misery. They all have what it takes to be little rascals. <laughs> From the director of Wayne's World and the Beverly Hillbillies. The Little Rascals. Alfalfa, this is a sign of you I never seen before. Playing this summer. At a theater near you. So I will say, I had my reservations okay. for this episode because not only is this a movie that I know and we both know, whereas some of these movies we both don't know or both haven't seen in a while, mm -hmm. we both had seen it at least semi-recently. Yes. And growing up, you watched it a bunch? And growing up, had watched it a bunch. And I knew I liked it going in. But God damn, this movie's good. <laughs> I have two statements. One, uh, hot take. Please. I think this movie is almost perfect i think that's i think that's an excellent statement almost perfect and my hot take is and i let me read my notes yeah if you dislike this movie you're a shitty person i could i could see i could we'll get into it i can see you having gripes or not with the movie but i could see you having notes but uh, overall this movie is damn near a perfect kids movie. but this is my disclaimer for yeah. that 90s. There are some, I mean, sure. <laughs> Disclaimer 1A. 1994. 1B. Some movies you just suspend reality yeah. and enjoy the film. Yeah. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles sure. is a great example. But that's easy to do because those are turtles. But These I mean, like, human. they're turtle humanoids <laughs> that are very anti crime. And yeah. you're like, well, that makes sure. perfect sense. It checks out. Home Alone. It's an eight year old. That can booby trap his house to defend it. Yeah. In reality, no. <laughs> that makes no sense. There's phones, there's neighbors. Yeah, I get it. And Fair. so this, when there are things that happen that you're like, like at no point am I questioning anything. From yeah. the beginning scene with them fishing on the dock mm -hmm. and the hooks are caught on each other and they're pulling each other in to Spanky sitting on a fire hose and he's floating up in the air. To the boys taking parts from a washing machine and building a go-kart with it. It's really good. It does not matter. They could go to the moon, and I would just say, for the ride. that checks out. Well, then here's my hot take, or hot take question. Is this a top five 90s kids movie? Like, this is I, Mount Rushmore, possibly. It's really, really good. I think the answer I'd is have, yes. We'd, we'd have to look at the whole spectrum of it, but this this is making a strong... I can't think of anyone that dislikes this movie. That's that's a fair statement. If that, and if that's your lead, then... So, I think Home Alone's got to be in there. Yeah. I think Sandlot. Sandlot. Hook, some people have opinions on, but I Which think it's crazy, mostly critics. Yeah. I think yeah. it's mostly people our age are well, 
Critics had some things to say about this as and well. If Ebert can go fuck himself, <laughs> if he is critical my, my of goal anything in of this. this show, is just to slowly get you more and more mad at Siskel and or. Oh, Ebert. there's no need. I'm there. I'm in the red. <laughs> I'm at a nine. <laughs> I am maybe past that point. Four out of four yeah. stars. Ebert. Anger. Four out of four fuck stars. Yourself. Anger. <laughs> Taglines and plots. Here's what I found. Boys will be boys. Girls will be girls. But this summer, they'll all be rascals. Saw that. And the other one, which is less of a tagline and more of a plot, Alfalfa is wooing Darla and his he-man woman-hating friends attempt to sabotage the relationship. I mean, at least that's succinct and to the point. There yep. were so many lengthy plots. Oh, those I didn't find a lot. So I'm, oh, there were so many. It was <laughs> I just described I'm like, the you entire just, movie. Yeah, it was the movie basically <laughs> the in a movie. short summary. So this is one that I found that I thought was short enough to be a plot but long enough to actually okay. let you know what's going on. The sanctity of the He-Man Woman Haters Club is threatened when one of its most respected members, Alfalfa, falls in love with, of all things, Darla. It's up to his pal Spanky to set things straight before his indiscretions jeopardizes the club's chances of winning the big go-kart race in a few weeks. So you got a it. pretty clear understanding of what's going on, what's at stake. Okay, yeah. I think that did it pretty well. Plots. A bunch of cute kids run around saying adorable things for under 90 minutes, but kiss a bit too much for my liking. Saying like this is uh, how I, I made the statement. Yeah. Uh, this is like a near perfect film. Yeah. It's an hour and 22 minutes. It's. I wrote that down. It is throwing 100 miles an hour the entire movie. movie. And it's to the point. There's there not are like, no, I mean, there's no fat on the movie. No, there's no scenes that I would cut. No. I don't know that I'd even shorten them. Every scene has use to it. Yeah. It is going somewhere. It's not just like, here's a random scene of someone eating breakfast right. and like they spill their cereal. Yeah. There's no filler. So it's currently on Netflix, but it's about to leave. It so, is. you know, we got the warning on Netflix that about to leave. <laughs> you got two so weeks we got left it to in watch. just yeah. in time until some other streamer takes it or we have to go to the library again for the third time this season. Ugh. Rated PG. Um, the I went into the the ratings and it all it all checked out. It said PG for some rude dialogue. I that made me laugh. But one of the, one of the notes I enjoyed was Alfalfa drinks dish soap and bubbles come out when he sings. Parents may want to warn kids that this prank won't work as advertised. I think Kim asked, <laughs> and I'm like, so fair. Yeah, so then it's work. it's warranted. But I, I just love to but think of. But this is how we learn. A, a, you got to try it. A serious sit down with their family guys. We're gonna. I just need to sit for so a minute. Drinking soap. I know. I know you love little rascals, it's not especially gonna this scene. Yeah. Don't drink. What you soap, think please. is gonna happen no. will not happen. No, we're gonna end up in the hospital, maybe. But six point three on IMDb. It, a worse score than Little Giants. But by how much? Not much. Point one. Okay. I don't care. I don't care how much it is. That's fair. You got to flip those. I don't scores. care if they're even. You got to flip those scores. That's. I mean, all this whole season so far is a lot of six point ish movies. Like, and they're that's all... what nineties kids movies are. Yeah. But you're gonna tell me objectively this is a worse movie than Little Giants? Well, I won't use that rating to describe it, but their Rotten Tomatoes rating was twenty one percent, and that is way abysmal. too low. That is way too low. Criminal. How low that is. Unacceptable. Directed by Penelope Spheres, the legendary director of Wayne's World, the no Beverly idea. Hillbillies, I Black Sheep, no the idea. Bohemian Rhapsody video, Come on. Megadeth music videos, and a short film called Shit. So, <laughs> so enjoy that. The writers of this movie are Penelope Spheres, which her writing experience uh, included one episode of Roseanne, or like as a highlight. Uh, Robert Walter Stoff. Which uh, he directed. Oh, who can forget who that? Can forget him. Three episodes of Quantum Leap, Quantum Leap, and ten episodes of the Jeffersons. Jeffersons. Mike Scott, who direct, who wrote for this and a music video for Ellie Golding recently. Huh. And composed music for Goodwill Hunting, Waking Ned Divine, and Miami Vice. It's kind of wow. all over the place. But the other two writers, Paul Guay and Stephen Mazur, uh, di- ended up directing Liar Liar and Heartbreakers. As a as a duo, or wrote, pretty solid. Wrote it. So now the money is their budget was tw- twenty three million, which well, pretty high, pretty high, especially for a kids cast, especially for a kids cast. And f- if you can think about, it, there's not like CG. I there's not there's not a CG. Well, there's a not, few. There's what a fart the bubbles. Bubble? <laughs> I guess there's a fart bubbles. Who knows how much that costs? But like that's pretty expensive. Yeah, it did gross sixty seven point three million. So they made their pretty money back good. times. Three, yeah, about, so. pretty good. I want to see like VHS and DVD sales yes. now. Like, I, is this something that it, like heavyweights that it's grown over time? I, I, it feels like it has to because this again, this is one that nobody I've heard say I don't. I don't like. No, I, I for one, I'm not a fan. Right. It ranked fourth that weekend in the box office behind Clear and Present Danger, 
The Mask and Forrest Gump. So is that that's you know Oof, maybe maybe weekend. maybe in a different time slot, a different slate, weekend slate, it could have uh, had bigger numbers. Wow. But still, uh, sixty-seven point three million. So we discussed Rotten Tomatoes did them dirty. IMDb six point three. The Metascore forty-five. Not, still too low. Still too low, and this is why. So it starts as high as a hundred from the from the Tampa Bay Times. The Little Rascals is marvelously quaint fun, proving that they can make them like they used to. Somewhere, Hal Roach is smiling. You betcha. Hal Roach is the creator okay. of the original Little Rascals. I mean, I agree. Well done, Tampa Bay. Right. So just end there. Okay. But we're not going to. I feel. I already feel my pulse. Yeah, but your blood pressure is rising. 67 from the Austin Chronicle. Adults can enjoy the way these youngsters spout grown-up chatter and all ages can delight in the old-fashioned slapstick. I won't claim this film's great, but it is fun and remarkably innocent and playful. What is the adult banter? What was the wording? The grown-up chatter, as the youngsters spout grown-up chatter. So basically, it's just what is the grown-up chatter. That's just that that they talk. That they're in pro- pro- <laughs> English. I, I, <laughs> that they're not going Google Gaga the whole movie. Yeah. Um, How old are they supposed to be in this? That's a good question because in my mind, I assumed they're around Cam and Charlotte's ages, eight. But yeah. it feels like probably they have to be older because they're. Some of them, but Porky seems younger. Yeah. It, there's got to be a range. Maybe yeah. like six to nine I would, I, would, I would say six to ten, somewhere in there. Alfalfa's like, alfalfa. on the higher end. You can't wiggle your ears unless you're at least ten no. years old. So. Or make your hair stand yeah. up. <laughs> exactly. So I'd say six to ten safe. The Washington Post gave it a 50. Both director and co-writer of Rascal's Redux, Spherus, coexes artlet, artless performances from the picture's engaging ensemble of half-pint players. Artless performance. I'm getting more agitated. It's, get, it's going to get worse. Okay. Time Out gave it a 40. Mm. Director Spheres of Wayne's World seems to have taken her obsession with youth culture beyond the limit, including a scene of dancing teenies in pink leotards that would make John Waters blush. I don't get the reference, but it was funny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Basically saying it's a risque scene when really it's like, it's if you're, funny. If, if, but if you're going to find gripes in this movie, that was probably one of the ones that I wouldn't have found. Even with everything that we know now in yeah. mind, still funny, still holds up. It's a funny It's, it's a funny not movie. over the top in that it's like, oh, this is disgusting right. or whatever. It's right. just funny. Yeah. Well, get ready for okay. get ready uh, not to laugh because here's your good friend, Gene Siskel, coming in hot. With not a, my good friend. With a 25. Come and I on. so again, this is one of the times where I went to try to find the original review and the link was broken. So the only line I have is a dismal kids comedy in which all creativity stopped after casting lookalikes for the old rascals was completed. Are they not talented? I could watch them paint a wall like they're they I have can't charisma. Even, they're fun. They're funny. I can't pick my favorite one. No, they're all good. They're all so they're so adorable. good. They're adorable. They're funny. They have great timing. Like they're great per- timing. They're perfect. And Empire gave it a twenty. Said oh, good. What sounded like a bad idea before it started shooting proves such an atrocity that it makes her last effort, the Beverly Hillbillies, look almost Oscar worthy. So again, the adult critics are not here for the adorable kids movie. Not Fine. Then don't review it. Yeah. <laughs> if you're if you find yourself writing down a twenty, then you should probably stop and realize this wasn't. This may not have been for me. <laughs> Plus. We have joked a lot about mm-hmm. like shitting on kids' movies, sure. how it feels awkward. Mm-hmm. This is the only instance where I feel like it's they're missing the point. Yeah. Like if you're a horror movie critic, yeah, don't reveal comedy. Sure. And vice versa. Mm-hmm. It's not gonna pan out for you. It's not your thing. You're not gonna have a good time. No. Yeah. If you pizza when you shoot a French fries. <laughs> <laughs> but for this, like if you can't take this for face value, yeah. I mean you you We're not to. looking for an Oscar no. award winning movie here. The boys put it on voluntarily this morning. Yep. Because I watched it last night. Yeah. Cam put it on this morning before school. They're both laughing. It's watching the whole thing. It's great. Like, can we finish it, Dad? I'm yep. like, you bet your ass we can. <laughs> Skip and school. We're honey, we're calling out sick. Tell we're Gene just... <laughs> Siskel that he can go, go to hell. I remember there was a while where Charlotte was really into this movie. And then also the subsequent sequel, which I did not know exist, was being spun and it is not as good. But... I'm sure it's not. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll get into that later. But it won a couple of awards. Did you Saw see that? that? Yep. Do, you, do you have them for me? The 1995 BMI Film Music Award. Sure. And then the 1995 Young Artist Award, Best Performance by a Youth Ensemble in a Motion Picture. As it deserves. I agree. Because if you had to pick one, I wouldn't know who to pick. So Honestly, there, the every ensemble. every performance holds up next to it. Like yeah. I, I couldn't pick anyone that just like 
really stood out. No. They're all just so good. That's great. I always make a note of who the cast is, but the concern is that I also don't want to dip my toes into the dead or alive category. Oh. And there's a lot of black and white pictures, so I just kind of scan right by it. So this I did is not my reveal. concern. I know. When I saw that, I got very... Very upset. Anytime you get child actors, and we'll we'll get to that later. Nick, yes, we but. will. But I but I perp I purposely did not click on links because I was like, I'm gonna know too much. I respect your restraint. <laughs> Thank you for the love of the game, for the love of the podcast. All right, let's take it from the top. My first note: I'm going to have a problem giving this movie any notes. Like it's even from the beginning, just the music starting, the Music's showing, great. love it, them rounding up the gang. Like it's all just like already perfect feeling. Great. The so. sped up action. Yeah. Anytime it goes oh, like those a, are so good. <laughs> Perfect. It's used so so much and it never is it never gets old. But like every it's time it's yeah. just like good. Yep. Yep. Glad you did it again. Maybe I was actually hoping you did it again. It's an hour twenty two because they're just speeding up so much. That's it. You know what? We got it an hour thirty. We need to cut eight minutes. Well, I got the I got it. the solution for you. They did it. Porky and Buckwheat, impeccable duo. Oh, like they are just they so are good perfect yin and yang. Mm. They have great again, great mm. comedic mm. timing. Mm. And just a sidebar, Porky is Isla. The two of them, I cannot stop looking at him and thinking of her. The like cheeks. the cheeks, just the overall Bro-eyes. goofiness. Like it's it was all it all checked out for me. And just like Porky and Buckwheat were an impeccable duo, Butch and William, another perfectly good set of villains where I think those names you can't name you can't give better names for a duo like even to the point where if there are other movies where there are bad guys Mm -hmm. my brain goes to Butch and Warm like (laughs) so I looked up because one of my questions yes was what kind of name is Warm (laughs) So I, I looked it up. Yeah. <laughs> According to Urban Dictionary, which is the source of all of my questions. Yes, it should be. Woim is the epitome of bad. It is slang spoken predominantly in Southeast London. If one is described as wow. Woim, then their life has no value and they should probably <laughs> kill themselves. <laughs> I thought, again, this was, I thought again, there was just someone dictionary. said worm like a weird way. That well, is hilarious. So, so woim. Brooklyn-esque way of saying worm. Oh, you woim. You woim. Wow. But, you're, but you should here, kill you yourself? Like you're, well, probably. <laughs> probably. Oh, it, it at least gives the caveat. You know, we're not telling you to, but, you know, but probably consider it. Not a bad idea. The more we get into this movie, the more I realize how much this movie is embedded into the fabric of my life. Yes. And, uh, the, little, the secret sign yep. or the chin, mm-hmm. like so many mm-hmm. quote. I mean, this movie, all my notes, like 80% of them are just quoting this movie. And like, I got a many, dollar. <laughs> yeah. Like, but it, it, it all is just, it's so good that it ended up becoming part of my personality to, to, to a point where I was like, I guess it's all starting to make sense now. It, it's all checking out now that I'm rewatching this movie. It's like you realize half your dialogue is just from this movie <laughs> and you're like, oh if man, I got seen, it from this. Anyone need to see this movie, Seinfeld, Early Simpsons. And maybe a couple other things mixed in, they go, yeah, I got them. I right. got them. I don't need any I've more. heard this like, before. I, I see it and I know it now. One of the first lines I wrote down was, raise your right hand, your other right your hand. Other like, right hand. Solid like Stooges kind of joke. Mm-hmm. Love it. I'm there for it. Even Stymie's speech at the beginning. Yes. Where he goes on a long rant and everyone goes, <gasps> and then they all say it back. <laughs> yeah. Great acting, first it's, off. For them so to good. memorize all that, I can't imagine many of them can read. And I, So for them to be able to memorize those scripts yeah. and that long a dialogue, just impressive. Well, and I love in the outtakes, too, when you can hear the director just, like, getting frustrated off screen, being like, yes. please stop, please right. pay attention. So you know... Don't look at the camera. Mu- <laughs> Don't look at the camera. <laughs> you know it must have been just a real... It, it must have been a real effort to get through some of this, but it, it ended up so good that it's like, you at least... It wasn't for nothing, which no. was which is what I wrote down. This movie, I feel like could have been very bad in the wrong hands. Like Agreed. not only not only the jokes or like some of the things they did with it, but just like swap different casting, different different anything. Like just taking the old IP and just remaking it. Like it, it, it goes wrong a lot. And to the director's credit, I saw before filming each day, she would hug each child actor to ensure closeness and trust in the group. I like it. And. I think this might have been the first movie I saw that had bloopers at the end, too. It's so good. And then I wrote down, like, why does every 90s kids movie not have bloopers at the end? I this wonder needs if, to be a requirement. I wonder if Toy Story and Pixar took, like, saw this and Maybe. were like, perfect. And that they have to write, yes. obviously, because they have to animate it. It's still <laughs> but funny, it works. though. It works. I said, I wrote down, I would watch a whole movie of just the outtakes from this movie. Totally like, agree. And and be perfectly pleased with it. Yep. Don't even need a real movie. No. But this is where we start getting some of the, I know 90s movie, I know kids movie, kids movies. I forgot how much the kids kiss in this movie. And it, it I, I get that it, at a certain, to a certain point it is adorable, but also like, 
there, there's a scene towards the end where it's like the end. It's like the closing and Alfalfa and Darla just hug. And I was like, that's that's better to me. I don't yeah. need to see the kids kissing like tons of times. But again, because this movie's so good, I'm going to let it slide. But okay. if, I'm, if I'm picking. So question to you, though. Mm-hmm. Sounds to me like you'd rather have a blank check situation where there's a bigger difference in hey, age. We're going to cut Is here. Is that the issue? <laughs> Is the problem they're the same Did age? Did I walk right into that? Is that the you, issue? You walk straight into it. <laughs> like you just opened your arms. Like just, just two kids the same kiss. age yeah. kissing? Yeah. Ugh. Not uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. I need 20 to 30 years of age difference. Minimum. Fair. Fair point. And one of them has to be a minor. Yeah. <laughs> if, I, if I have a preference. God damn you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just asking. Um, yeah. We get Waldo, another perfect casting for a villain. And as they're meeting, he's, Alfalfa says, I'm Alfalfa. He says, yes, I'm sure you are. Mm-hmm. Like, there's, I, I can't tip my head enough to this movie and the writing. It's, Even it's, when he says his dad o- owns the oil refinery and Darla's like, oh, that's why you're so refined. Yeah. And Alfalfa, yeah, and so oily. <laughs> Both, oh, it's, just perfect, perfect but, lines. And they're all, de- again... It's it's written by adults, obviously. So you know, so you assume that that's thought out. But the kids are the delivery. It feels is natural. It feels like on. you are just filming kids. Yes. Scenes that I find are the most memorable are ones that I think of when I think of this movie. I like it. The lunch scene with Darla and Alfalfa. Yep. Absolutely ice cold. Some of the things they do. Them. Eat the, a kitty litter. The, the kitty litter sandwich is brutal and it the crunch so... i wonder what they were actually eating because it does sound <laughs> it's a fair crunchy. question i mean that could have been you know uh adr could have been off screen could have been done in editing okay but it you it feels real it, it feels like it's there so I'm, I'm gonna give them the credit and say they were really crunching on something i think they're really eating kitty litter and i they the commitment to the to the bit here throughout the movie is present so yep. i think the kitty litter sandwich is real the grape soda in a boot and that was one of my questions that i have for you is sure Grape soda. Yeah. Do you think it's underrated, overrated, or appropriately rated? What is the rating? Typically not fans. I mean, it had its time in the 90s. I, to me, it's either you're a grape soda or orange soda fan. Oh, okay. Well, if I'm picking between those two, I'm going orange soda. Are you? Yeah. And okay. you? Probably. Yeah. But I think maybe I haven't had grape soda in 25 plus years. Maybe it's time to bring it back it's worth the taste. and see, it's worth the taste see what happens. Yeah. Oh, but probably my favorite line of that whole scene is, you know, just what to say to take a girl's breath away and then pork you with a, this will take her breath away. Like, so mm-hmm. deliver- <laughs> delivered so good. I just can't. I'm just in watching this movie and just laughing out loud to myself the entire time. All the background so, lines are good. They're so like, good. You know how to make a sandwich. Right. That ain't sand. That was kitty litter. <laughs> it's pretty fresh. <laughs> Doug, there's so, so many, like, one more additional line yep. after every funny thing that yep. it just builds and builds and builds. I found myself just grinning most of the movie. Yeah. It's just it's so just good. good. You could have convinced me that like Mel Brooks wrote it like that. There was some heavy hitter writer, but I mean, obviously they did a good job, but it's you could have convinced me that it was some like famous comp comedy writer that And like, speaking of Mel Brooks, he's in it. Great there are so Saw many cameos. great cameos. Yeah. We have Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen, which in the time, that's like getting I wrote I wrote down how did they land them and unfortunately spoiler I could not find any information on because I was like they were like heavy that's like their prime right that like they, yeah untouchable yeah and just a small bit part just in the background like nothing just here you go a throw <laughs> Raven at, yes Raven Simone at the end like again she's in it heavy hitters Mel Brooks George Wendt Leah Thompson Daryl Hannah Reba McIntyre Whoopi Goldberg you're missing somebody and even Donald Trump <laughs> number 45 which aged pretty well for him to be a jackass rich guy whose son is a total shithead. I will say, say checks out pretty well. Say what you will about him. This is a perfect casting. It's he a does perfect his part. Like he he he's got a scene in this and Home Alone too, and he's, yes, he he's, does. He he is cast as Donald Trump in those yep. movies, and he plays himself to a T. So yes, he if does. If I'm ever going to give him credit, then there it is. There's his credit. The only thing I have a, an issue with is his eyebrows. They are are they unwieldy? Unruly, <laughs> like so aggressive. Yeah, just like all over the in place, all or? directions. <laughs> Makeup couldn't have gone in there and run a comb through them. A comb, a razor, something. <laughs> a blow dry, like a, it, it is <laughs> a <insane>. leaf blow. <laughs> We're still in the lunch scene, and the He Man Woman Haters Club is there. They're screwing up his lunch. They're putting all the pranks, the sandwich, all the things they're doing to him. And now they're knocking on the door, and Alfalfa is trying to get rid of Darla. Mm-hmm. And the line that I enjoyed was, "I'm not ashamed of you. I'm proud of you. I just don't want anyone to see you." Like, yes. 
And then so good. here's the wall, here's the other wall, <laughs> and here's the closet. <laughs> here's the closet. <laughs> and then when he blows out the candles, I because I knew it was gonna happen, I'm watching. Yeah. First two go out, second one clearly flickers and stays lit. Mm-hmm. It, I don't know how many takes that took, yeah. but then for him to fold it up and then everything catches on fire, yep. again, it's just like they could have cut corners. They could have made this so much worse than it was. It really could have been And bad. it's still like this is almost realistic It somehow. seems like everything was thought of. Like Yes, it's all every like, detail. It's all there this is not shoddy work yeah the blur is is not only a cool looking car but it's a sweet Sweet name for a car like again they they that was my nickname the blur you were the blur well i'll still call you the blur if you want please how do you plead when they when they tell alfalfa that he's gonna he's gonna be sentenced to death Mm -hmm. how do you plead like this please that's a pretty Pretty good good pleading (laughs) that again that's a line that's fine, but delivered mm-hmm. just so perfectly. Good. Yeah, the kids screaming about the lightning still cracks me up so every good. single time it happens. So good. And they go, they have a shot to both boys and girls yep. screaming. So good. The back and forth with all the lines, bungee jumping, how they're getting gross mm-hmm. out of run. They like to moon you. No, we no, don't. We don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's ah, God. It's this. This is. A, this, I don't know if I've if I've made my opinion. You know clear but this movie is a good movie i already cursed both siskel and ebert yeah. so i don't couldn't think find I any be... for ebert but siskel oh, i don't care i'm sure he hated it so let's get into we can't make this whole episode just kissing the the cheeks of this movie fine. Although it'll probably be the rest of it fine but let's just address something here okay which is we get a montage yep because they have to rebuild the clubhouse in the blur they have to rebuild the clubhouse in the blur this is where we get a montage with uh orchestrated by our good friend randy newman uh, yes. The song is called Short People. Yeah. Have you ever taken a gander at the lyrics of this song? Like, I know you could yeah. probably... <laughs> when I, so I looked at the lyrics. <laughs> I have them here. We're going to walk through and them. And I okay. have also, in the moment, yes. was like, wow. Yeah. And I even remember when Toy Story came out. Mm-hmm. I'm like, the short people got no reason to live? <laughs> He's writing... The songs for Toy Story were they okay with that? Did uh, they know? They, oh, they knew. They had to have known. You don't. You don't get Randy Newman without knowing short people. Short people got no reason to live. Mm-hmm. They got little hands, True. and little eyes. Yep. And they walk around telling great big lies. They sure do. They got little noses, tiny little teeth. Mm-hmm. They wear platform shoes on their nasty little feet. So yeah. what? Don't what want no short. What people. we're getting. What we're getting to here is that Randy Newman does not like children and possibly. Other people who are short. Did you look at a deeper dive of that, though? I didn't. Okay. So he said he intended the song to be a satire about prejudice more broadly. Okay. He said the guy in that song is crazy. He was not to be believed. Newman would later grow to dislike the song and its success, eventually calling it a bad break. He never intended it to be wow. a popular song. And, and people like loved it. And he was just <laughs> like, song. Until that's unfortunate. Wow. So... It was included on almost all of his greatest hits albums, but it sounds like he knew it was satire. Yeah. Others did not. Fair. Others did not care and just liked it. And he was like, I think you guys might be missing something wow, here. Wow, incredible. So I don't think he really cared for it. But well, I, not that it takes away from playing a song, <laughs> Short People Got No Reason to Live, in The Little Rascals. Well, so many people need contact. I mean, that's a perfect fit for this movie, but so many, I have to imagine so many people throughout the years hearing this song have been like, this is a sour I place have, of a man. I have. That's what I'm saying. Like it's ninety percent have no context that this is about a character or somebody else. It'd all be the- like we should kill all puppies. <laughs> I'd be like, why? I love puppies. Why this, is this? A I song? wrote the song and I'm singing the song, but I for Guys, one love puppies. It's satire. <laughs> it's satire. Get, have a sense of humor, would you? They I got meant cats. They got little cars that go beep beep beep. They got little voices going peep, peep, peep. <laughs> they got grubby little fingers and dirty little minds. I mean, that's true. They're gonna get you every time. It's just. Just un, an un, unbelievable song with. We should fact it. check that whole song <laughs> line by line. Some of my favorite scenes from this movie. This is where we get the bank scene, which is just an oh, all timer. Oh yeah, you get Mel Brooks, yes, which you, you already do. know it's going to be gold. But all the lines back and forth. Gentlemen, have a seat. We can't sit down, my. And goodness. it's the Muppets <laughs> act where they're sitting on top of each other. It's going to win every time. Like mm-hmm. you're not going to you're not going to not laugh when you're seeing that. What's your account number? Seven? Mm-hmm. Seven? Seven? Eight? <laughs> Again, adorable. If we were your kids, we'd punish ourselves. Yeah, I wrote that one down too. It's so good. Stymie. Just Stymie. nailing it, man. Absolutely killing it. You can't treat people this way. You're not people. You're kids. Perfect, perfectly laid up Which after. Randy Newman is like. After the, Randy Newman's like, thank you, appreciate you. About. See, it's not just me. 
Mel Brooks too. We skipped it, one of my favorite scenes too. Please. And I have some trivia with it. Excellent. The I got a dollar. I sure. got a dollar. And I have two pickles. Mm-hmm. Did you know, Nicholas, mm. that that was ad-libbed? During the 20th anniversary photo shoot, which, spoiler alert, they had a 20th anniversary photo shoot. And we weren't invited. No. <laughs> no. Ridiculous. <laughs> so they recreated the movie poster and a bunch of other scenes. Awesome. I don't know if you've seen them. No. You will have to pull them up. They're so good. They recreate really? all the... I have it. I'll send it to you. Okay, please. It's so, so good. Okay. So during the photo shoot, Ross Bagley, who played Buckwheat, revealed that he improvised the famous We Got a Dollar number. Incredible. And watching it with Porky, Porky genuinely seems tickled by the whole thing. Like... He's just riffing yeah. and Porky and is really enjoying it. Yeah. So I totally buy it. And yes, the, the posters are incredible. But I do have another addition to the problematic category. Oh, okay. Yes. I'm problematic. When they come in dressed as the fairies, the girls say, are you a fairy? And they go, no. And they say, a sugar plum fairy. Oh, of course. Mm. So the fairy in the first reference being, you know, a bit... Uh, a bit more. Of I a, wonder if they uh, even meant that. If they were just like, well, "Are you a real fairy?" and they're like, "No." Oh, oh yes. Are um, we all for for the love of this movie? I'm gonna hope that's was the okay. case and wasn't a uh, you know a what would you say a slur a dig. <laughs> something you would use to potentially perhaps my naive little mind watching this. <laughs> I'm really. Hoping. I think I reverted back to like. <laughs> nine-year-old gym I'm, so maybe i'm hoping that we weren't getting in the realm of like something that used to get said a lot in the 90s okay. to make <laughs> okay fair <laughs> that also fair. start with the same letter so i'm just gonna again i'm gonna go with your okay. naivety and my love of this movie and just say no does okay. not apply Let's not roll problematic with that. we're gonna roll with it good but so alfalfa and darla are on the rocks and already immediately as they're talking through this darla is immediately dating waldo hey, yeah hey darla things move pretty quickly darla you you just broke yeah I mean you just broke up with Alfalfa yeah. like I get it you want to you want to stick it to him a bit but like give it a minute let the you know let it breathe for a second don't make any rash decisions but he's also magically there like after the um the clubhouse burns down mm -hmm. he's there he something is up he it's sure, just, he's a bad it's, seed. it's suspicious yeah I almost wonder if he had something to do with the fire because it's, he just naturally seems to be arriving with in his car. It's a, I don't know. It's I like I like where mine's going. I like where the gears are working. Right. Yeah, and I, I don't. I think this Waldo is not. Uh, I don't like the cut of his jib. Can't be trusted. No. But Alfalfa running around in his underwear. Your your thoughts. What was your comfort level on that? <laughs> Honestly, so I I wonder if this would come up. Yeah. Oh, it's oh, it's coming up. I think it. The underwear. That's part a joke was about his hair. Fine. Boner too. Yes. Yeah. I think the underwear part was fine. Okay. Because he's so little. Okay. There's nothing suggestive. Mm -hmm. It's whitey tidies. So I think that's just funny too. Sure. I don't know why it had to come off when he swam in the pool. Yeah, I'm probably that, that not definitely, needed. We could definitely, we could definitely cut that. But also, it. you don't see. I think if you had like a shot from behind where you like see like cheeks. his bare ass, yeah, that would be an That'd issue. That'd be bad. That'd be bad. This is still very like you know what happened. Yeah, and he's like, "Oops." Yeah, and Darla's laughing, and then you move on. So I think, again, to your point, in the wrong hands, this could have ended this horribly. This movie's a disaster. I think they do such a good job of towing the line when they need to, yep. not going overboard, realizing it's kids. I think it's still pretty appropriate. Because this movie is so charming and funny and great, the any things that you could nitpick kind of just, you, you lose they them. They fizzle like, away. They do because... If this movie was bad anyway, this is what I'd be hanging on to the right. entire time. I'd be like, no, right. no, and no, this, this and this. <laughs> yeah, it, it, this is where it gets out of hand. But Plus, this. they switch gears so quickly, right. you almost don't have time to That's dwell. True. There's no like worse. quiet scene next or no dialogue where you're left to have lingering thoughts. Right. You're already moving on to the next scene, the next funny line, the next whatever. Yep. Um, and in that scene, as he's leaving, Darla, there's a perfectly good explanation for this. Which I'll make up later. Which I'll make up later. Butch and Wyman, this is the time where they are stealing the blur right after like the pickles and everything. How the heck did they manage to tie a dollar to a duck's leg? Valid to steal question. The blur? Valid question. Because you already happening. said the quote, like there's nothing like a buck and a duck. Yep. Okay, let me get this straight. <laughs> you were able to tie a string to a dollar and then tie said dollar to a duck's foot? They're impressive, this Butch and Wyman. They're no joke. That means they have to set a trap, essentially like a big, a big knot to, and 
hope a duck walks into it and then it's just, just the right time. Bitten. It, <laughs> which kids, every kid's going to be afraid of a duck if it starts. I'm terrified. Have you ever <laughs> tried <adults>. to like <laughs> go near a duck or a goose? Yes, that's true. We get the line, Spanky, we've got an idea. Keep it. You might need it when you grow up. The, I didn't get that. It's, it's, when, it's right when they're going into um, the, what would you say, the county fair. And okay. they're getting ready to do that. That's when someone, wa- they're, they're setting up their little... What the you, four foot man eating yes, chicken, yes. which still They're setting makes up their little, little, their little boot. Yeah. I don't exactly. even know what that kid's name is no. in the movie, but. Well, one of the things I saw that I guess blew past me because it was not, I didn't know, was that um, the little rascals, the original had 41 different characters oh like throughout the series. So they had to obviously trim it down for this movie. Yeah. But there, they said there are just like ancillary characters that are in the movie that probably don't even have lines or just in the background and they're based off of okay like, i mean you recognize her face yes. but just a four foot man eating chicken it's it's funny not, yeah i'm warming up my vocalizer again a line that's baked into the recesses of my mind to mm-hmm. use if i'm if need be mine is people we need to build a new clubhouse <laughs> excellent see there, it just it doesn't even have to necessarily be anything that's like like a top line but it's just something that just gets set right, in that you repeat use. it yeah that, that you'll that you repeat Constantly. which again to her point penelope spheres she's wayne's world i've got i mean the quotable movie wow. this like she she knows what she's doing um the songs that they both perform at the talent show if i hear them in real life as real songs yep. this is my reference like Same. this is what i'm thinking of is this scene in this movie yeah this movie has a stranglehold on me like it's <laughs> It's <laughs> it's a real problem. <laughs> it's almost tough to have nitpicks or like I have several more questions. Oh, excellent. It's tough to almost be critical because I'm so in love with the movie, but I do have but several more questions. Some of the things we love, we you know, we need to. We need to find out. We need answers. Where did Petey come from and who owns him? At the beginning of the movie, he's sitting on the porch with Spanky. Yep. But he goes wherever the heck he wants. So he's at no all one's times. dog in theory. He's just I, he's just the club's dog. I don't know. How did uh uh-huh get Elmer the monkey? No That's clue. A fair question. <laughs> Why is Stymie bald? I mean, that... <laughs> he's how old? And he's already bald. I, he's completely bald. When, he t- when he when it first showed him fully bald, like it. Never, it never was on my radar before. But I was like, huh? Why is right. he comp- <laughs> growing up? I'm like, cat looks cool. He looks awesome. <laughs> he's, it's good look. He's pulling but, off well. He doesn't have alopecia. He doesn't have it where like his eyebrows are. No, it's just, he's it's just, just bald. the dome. He's just bald. <laughs> and then my final question: Do Darla and Alfalfa end up together? Well, a fun fact. No, they don't. <laughs> a fun fact that I found was that uh, supposedly on scene or on set, Darla and Spanky had uh, goo goo eyes for each other. Mm. So you know, it's always who you wouldn't think. Yeah, Spanky, you wouldn't think we get with Darla. You know, no. in the end. You know, it makes it it makes me someone who's uncomfortable with children dating or kissing so happy to know that those two kids you yeah, know, were able to pull it found together. Love. <laughs> if they can, then you know, so so can we all. I love the bit of the parents who dress just like the kids. We just went through this yep. with little giants where they had the dad who dressed like the cowboy because the kid dressed like the cowboy. Yeah. That bit never doesn't work for me. Like if if a kid has a fun little costume, dad and has same to body dress, type and same body too. type, same dress. Yeah, check, check it, it works. Out. Check it it out. works. They had the whiteboard of all the like tropes, and they said we're getting through them all, and they're nailing. Boy, them. did they! They're nailing them. Um, I loved all the instant cuts in the movie where they go into the laundry room and immediately the soaps pour. It's you're not waiting for a while. It's just right. like immediately. Again, it's like yep. a sped up. Yep. They're again. They're not wasting a single no. No minute of of tape here. I love this little giant. We're going to the race. We're gonna win first place. And you've got an ugly face. And Porky's giggle there. The, the gi- that's and that's what I wrote down. The gi- it's not even the line. It's the giggle in the background. Like their little laughs. They're so fucking cute in this yeah. movie. Like if you were ever thinking, I don't ever. I don't know if I'm a kid person. I don't know if I'd be around kids. This movie could sway you because these kids are so fucking adorable that you'd be like. It's oh, almost shocking. It, it is. And every one of them, like, again, you're getting it. You're getting like, the perfect ugh, I capsule. I get it. You're adorable. <laughs> you're all adorable all the time. Who wouldn't want to have kids if, this, if these are kids? I'm, I, I'm, sorry to, I'm sorry to inform you. Kids are not adorable all the time. No. But in this movie. Maybe even most yeah. of the time. <laughs> Maybe like 90% of the time. This is where we get the chase scene where it's the race and now the, the cars are just going all through town. When they blow past the grocery store and they start hitting the adults and they are They're leaping over, they are absolutely like getting get annihilated through the air. I was dying laughing. Like it's not just like. They're dodging. They are being launched into and the a sky. guy in like an old man costume. <laughs> oh, oh. You little rascals! Perfect. You love Still, you love a titular fine. line. You love one, so it's there. I think too. This might have been the first kids movie where it's like 
a shocking reveal ending mm. because you assume that Waldo That's did true. good in the end. But and then when you see him pull up and you'll be hearing from my lawyer yep. and they're like, well, who's that guy? And it's Darla. And it you're just no like, guy. what the what? Yep. It's been the first, the first M night Shyamalan take note, because this oh, is how you twist. Where do you think he you got that from? <laughs> Sixth sense. Well, speaking of twists, I never knew. So I had, I, I've tried to make it a point now of watching all the movies with uh, subtitles on. Because mm-hmm. some of the things that come out that I didn't realize or my misunderstanding, I get my mind blown. One of the things was I thought for all these years it was smolioli. It is spolioli. Just a fun fact for I you. I thought it was scolioli. See? So, 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 all, so all of us are wrong. All these years misquoting. I mean, his voice is tough to pick it up on. It is too. It is true. And he doesn't really nail the line. He's kind of a little nasally. But yeah, spolioli. Can we get to that? Trivia and facts. Froggy's voice isn't him. Do you know who the voice is? That's not Froggy's voice. No. The entire time is is dubbed over. Yeah. Wow. Do you know who it is? Wow. No. EJ Daly. Do you know why that name sounds familiar? No. Tommy fucking Pickles. Wow. <laughs> this made everything worthwhile. That is to find Tommy out that Pickles' voice. That's incredible. And watching it now, I'm like, hear it. Yeah. But watching the Do you movie, know ahead of time? No, okay. of course not. Wow. Because wow. I watching it as a kid, even like watching it closely now, it's so closely done to when he's actually talking. It's nailed. I just thought this is a kid with a weird voice. Wow. Maybe they embellish it a little bit, but I thought, okay, he's saying it. He is not. Mm. E.G. Daly. Again, you've now blown my mind. Between Spolio and... I blew my own mind. <laughs> mind blown. And, th- and this is where you get the wrap-up ending. Everyone's happy. Boys allow girls into the, into the clubhouse. And even... Even Spanky wonders why did, are we are we trashing our forefathers and this will get the long line uh, from uh huh uh-huh. yeah he finally gives a new line and he has perfect uh, perfect syntax yeah and it's it's just an adorable ending he simply but- chose not to employ them yeah <laughs> it buttons up so nicely and then followed by the outtakes which again are just perfect awesome I want more of them I want a longer take of outtakes do you know what I want more of Nick? no I don't good night dead or alive. I don't want any answers to any of this. I don't. And I and I I implore you to not make me upset. I will do my best. I know last time was rough. You're no hard feelings, hopefully. This isn't about me being right or wrong. This is Nick, about you're gonna inform me of something that I don't want to hear. Nick, keep it together. <laughs> Mel Brooks as Mr. Welling. Mel Brooks is alive. I let's start from the top. Mel Brooks is alive. Okay, that was a that was a <laughs> softball. softball for you. Now, if you just said Carl Reiner, who's not in the movie, then I would ninety seven years old. Incredible. I will say, I'm I'm not putting anything into the universe. I Don't. Need, I need wood. Yes. When he passes away, that is going to be a bad. It's a rough day. It's going to be a bad day. It's yeah. going to be a bad day. Yeah. Okay. Daryl Hannah. She's alive. She's alive. She's alive. She's alive. She's Miss alive. Crabtree? Yes, she's alive. 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 Okay. All right. Now I we're getting feel, oh, now no, we're getting to some kids. I don't like this. I know. This is, hor- this I is know. horrifying. <laughs> I hate this. I hate this. Heather Kirasek, who plays Jane. She's the little blonde-headed friend of Darla. Uh, with the curly hair? Yeah. I, I'm going to be so upset. <laughs> you know, I'm already prepared to be so upset. She's alive, please, and thank you. She is alive. <laughs> you're doing this thing. You're taking me on a roll. And I, I, I'm i going to be upset until it's done. I don't like this. All right. Last this. but not least, the frogman himself, Jordan Warkle. Alive. Yeah. <laughs> everyone. You couldn't bear. So everyone. You everyone. On this yes, movie. Yeah. Alive. Incredible. Man. Incredible. Alive. Incredible. That makes me so happy. You set me up, and I, last time, time I was, was so rough. Out. Yeah. Hey, I'm not a terrible friend. <laughs> I'm maybe not a great one, but I made so sure stressful. this time. I, as I'm looking through every kid, because like you said, there's a bunch All of black, the and, white are photos, black and white photos, and I got so upset. or it's what they look like when they were like seven, eight years old, and you're just like, oh, please, no, please, no. Everyone, everyone, I I clicked on that worked with the movie. Even like I went yeah. way far deep yeah. characters. All of them. Perfect. Great. And they were all able to reunite too for the That's 20th awesome. reunion. So they're alive. Well, and so one of my unanswerable questions was how did 
how did every one of these kids not get launched into some sort of, it felt like, I mean, again, this is part of the reason I didn't click on any links. Cause I was like, I don't want to find out any information that I'm, I'm not privy to or don't want to be privy to. But I was just like, how did all these kids not all spawn great movie careers? They're all so good and I mean, adorable. And bug hall was in the big green. He's in a few things. He's in the sequel. The the is little he? rascal sequel. He is in that. He but yeah, you I think they were just too good together. You yeah, couldn't break could up be. the team. Did you look at Bug? I did. How he has that. his name? No. So I always thought that was his real name, and I thought, what a stupid. That name, is a wild Bug name. I didn't write Bug Hall down just to just to. His real name is Brandon. Okay. His mother worked at a daycare center and would take him to work with her. She didn't want other kids to sit on him. So she made up a game that he was a bug, and if they sat on him, they would squash him. Bug Hall. Bug Hall. Still a dumb name, <laughs> but not his real one. <laughs> but there's a reason for it. One actor that did have a sequel. Mm. The dog. Petey. His <laughs> real himself. his real name was Petey. <laughs> All the animals played their by them real. By their he real was songs. in Homeward Bound too. Wow. So he was the one who had the most like well known career. Staying episode. power. <laughs> so that's that's. That's the movie. The one line I, I just an aside I wrote down was if they would have made a live action Peanuts movie, the little girl played Marianne would have been Peppermint Patty. She looked like yeah. her come to real life. Yes. Like, and I've always the thought it, yeah. she's perfect. So while you came up with the category unanswerable questions, I wanted to throw a few for answerable questions. So I have okay. some questions for you. Okay. Your favorite little rascal. False. Oh. <laughs> Who is your favorite little rascal? If you have to pick one. Or if there's a tie, fine, we'll allow it. I think... Both Buckwheat and Stymie are so freaking funny in this. Buckwheat and Stymie. They're solid. And I realized... I Porky and Buckwheat. There's that okay. combo. Is that so combo. <laughs> so if we're taking a duo, yeah. I think that's the duo that they're, they're has really to be good. there. You can't pick they one They play off each other so yeah. well. Otherwise, maybe Stymie. Stymie. I mean, they're good. they're funny for different reasons. Yep. Stymie seems more... He's a leader. He's like a grown up. Yeah, he's somehow. definitely the grown up in the room. Spanky needs to step aside and let Stymie come through. I think a little bit. He's a club leader for sure. But yeah, probably one of those two. Favorite little rascal name. Not necessarily character, but who is your favorite name of the bunch? Hmm. Probably Porky. Porky's good. I wrote down Froggy. Froggy's Froggy a solid, was... like, if you had a friend named Froggy, like, I, I want to meet that friend. If you had to pick one, who, what is the name you liked the least? I mean, what do we have? Alfalfa? Alfalfa. I, I mean, probably that we can end there. Uh, I said Stymie. I think it's not a great name. It's a weird name. name. It's a weird name, especially for a thing that's not a great thing to have, but I guess... Spanky, Froggy, these aren't like things you're looking... Spanky's funny, though. Sure. I, I mean, I've heard other people call people Spanky. Spanky salad. No one is going to call anyone Alfalfa. Or Stymie. If someone has hair that sticks up, then yep. that's the only reason they call me Alfalfa. But that's not a nickname that rolls right. off the tongue. So I'm going that. So now, if you were to look at the cast and go like your personality, anything to your likeness... Which little rascal do you would you envision yourself as? If you were to, oh. If you were to warp into the movie, you're like... Oh, this guy's most like me. Not the womanizer no. part, but the body type is alfalfa. <laughs> it's tough not to identify with a tall, skinny kid. <laughs> but personality too? Were you were you a, no. a lover, not a fighter? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I've never been in a fight. But I've also never you asked can, you can end that today. <laughs> I've also never asked a girl for their phone number or anything. Fair. So I'm I'm a unique blend. Sure. Yeah. I, I would probably say alfalfa. Sure. Now, my question for you. What would your little rascal name be? If you could come up with one, I could give you a minute to think about like, it doesn't have to be, it could be a name that already exists. Or if you could think of like a name that feels like it would fit. Because I have some ones that I could, that I could lend you that I think would be, would be solid. Lanky, probably. Lanky. I literally Googled tall kid nicknames. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> so these, these all fit, I think, in the realm of little rascal names. Ones that I enjoyed were Beanpole, <laughs> Limbs, oh, Long Shanks. Stilts and stretch. I thought we're all <laughs> so stretch. Are... Stretch was my nickname. So there you go. Stretch in junior is high. Perfect. Stretch is a perfect like little rascal's name. I could <sighs> heard. I could heard alfalfa, stymie, and stretch. Put like, limbs. Put limbs. I loved long shanks. I thought it was excellent. I looked up short kid nicknames for myself because I was a okay. tiny tot, and I found Munchkin, Dinky, and Chipmunk. I oh, thought those all were Dinky. <laughs> dinky, and I had a friend named Doink or something like that. Would have yes. all checked out. So I thought those were solid. I didn't find anything on casting, I guess. Well, uh, that one review, it sounded like 
they nailed the casting almost to their detriment where he's like, oh, you got the casting right and nothing else. <laughs> that's all that works. Okay. Like, that, it was pretty spot on. Yeah, nailed it. Uh, we started there and we, and we nailed it. So you said the line before filming each day, the director hugged them all. But like keeping them comfortable, mm-hmm. that's got to be tough too. Dealing with all those kids yeah. and animals to hit your mark, hit the lines, hit the delivery. I wonder how many takes some of these things took. What are we talking here? It, like It feels, I mean... In the outtakes, when you hear what I'm assuming is Penelope Spears' voice talking to the kids, she sounds exhausted. Especially Darla. She's like, Brittany, don't look at the camera. Brittany, Brittany. <laughs> so I don't know if that's her or just another, like, one of the other I'm directors. Sure it was. But it, you can hear it in her voice. They're like, oh, this is a parent who's been with their kids all day. Like, yeah. on, could you please? Enough. I'm, Enough. I'm, I'm counting to three. We have I'm counting to 30 three. more minutes of daylight. We have to get this. <laughs> Imagine trying to corral your own kids to do something. Now, 10 kids that aren't your kids no. in scenes together and animals, to your point. Recipe for disaster. There's got to be like hundreds and hundreds of hours of footage. That's that what I'm saying. Just the the outtakes movie. Yep. Or I'm ready for it. Some of the surviving cast members of the original Little Rascal series were upset they were not asked to participate in the movie. They, were, they could have been a cameo like... I, and I, and at first I was like, what are they, what are they, what are they whinging about? What are they upset about? I was like, I, maybe I side with them. That feels like an easy win just to be like, not in no, Sit in the stands, be a parent. That's what I'm saying. It could, it yeah. could have been someone who doesn't even have lines, but Bill Thomas Jr., son of the late Bill Thomas, who played Buckwheat, contacted the studio and was invited down to visit the set, but got the impression that the filmmakers did not want him or any of the surviving original cast members involved in any production capacity. The surviving cast members saw this as especially hurtful in light of the fact that director Penelope Spears had previously made a point of including Buddy Ebsen from the original Beverly Hillbillies in her film adaptation. Eugene Jackson, who played the original Pineapple, how can we forget Pineapple? Yeah. (laughs) From the silent R gang comedies, tried unsuccessfully to contact the studio to be part of production, stated it's real cold they have no respect for the old timers at least they could have recognized some of the living legends surviving from the first films living legends pineapple the living legend (laughs) okay got it yeah when waldo says atomic batteries to power turbines to speed do you know that that's a reference to something (laughs) i saw the from the original right the original batman the 60s batman television series which i did not know i didn't know that excellent love it so travis tedford spanky jordan warkle froggy and Cortland mead uh-huh. All provided voices in the movie A Bug's Life. Well, really? Well, well, fun fact for you. Uh-huh. 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 <laughs> uh-huh. The movie soundtrack, you'd think, oh, you got Randy Newman. You've got some some great songs in the background. Mm-hmm. Why is there no soundtrack to this movie? Well, let me tell you. A soundtrack album was planned for this film, but never released. Both MCA Records and Arista Records were in a bidding war for rights to the soundtrack. But when each label saw how much the film netted, they decided it wouldn't be worth it. So they both were upset wow. and wanted it, saw the numbers and were like, yep. we're good, eh, peace. Maybe not. <laughs> Which I thought just broke my heart a little bit. I was like, oh my God, they had so but heated. But do you really need a soundtrack to a kid's movie? You don't, but at this time, it just felt like movie soundtracks were a thing. Like if you liked the movie, you went right. you went down to the Sam Goody and you got and the soundtrack. And bought the CD. Yeah. How else am I going to have a copy of Short People Got No Reason to That's live? a really it's, good it came, question. It's nowhere else. Well, it's on the greatest hits. Yeah. <laughs> A little bit of trivia for you. Mm-hmm. Which little rascal has a star on the Walk of Fame in Hollywood? Oh, wow. So I'm not talking about an actor. You mean the character? The character has a star. I would have to assume Alfalfa. Wrong. Spanky. Spanky McFarlane. Okay. It's got to be one of them. It's, it's, you had a 50-50 shot at it. This one, this one hurts. So this is some more tea. Some more, some more unfortunate mm. news. Neither he nor any other children received any residuals or royalties from reruns of the shorts or licensed products with their likenesses. The only remittances were their weekly salaries. So this is the original. Okay. Their weekly salaries. And this harkens back to our episode on Wizard of Oz. I was going to say Toto. Please tune in. Please tune in and, and check that one out um, for more sad old news. Their weekly salaries during their time in the gang ranging from $40 a week for newcomers and $200 for more weekly stars like Spanky, Alfalfa, and Farina. One or the other. Oh, yeah. (laughs) How can we forget Farina? She was great. Sequels, prequels, spinoffs, and such. Um, So this is all obviously based off of the short films, which were not called Little Rascals, but were called Our Gang. Again, I did mm-hmm. not know. Eventually, we're coined into Little Rascals, but there's a good and bad thing here. So I immediately thought, oh, man, there's, this has got to be super problematic. This is from the 1920s. No way does this all check out. Right. But to their credit, it was a sh- it was a these were short films produced in the Jim Crow era. And it was one of the first in cinema history in which African-Americans and white Americans were equal in scenes. 
Hmm. And the five black child actors who held main roles in the series, one of them was signed to the first long-term contract in Hollywood history. Huh. So good on them. There, there is some good. Now to take it with a bit oh, of a gra- oh <laughs> no, <laughs> a bit of a grain of salt. The black children spoke in stereotypical dialects. Uh, several of the gags revolved around their skin color. Matthew Beard's stymie character sweat jet black ink. Okay. Billy Thomas's buckwheat character was given fake white measles instead of dark ones and supposedly turned into a monkey. So if we're gonna, if we're the gonna take what I can handle, <laughs> that one that one hurts. Now again, this is a hundred years ago. Okay, one hundred years ago. Good point. Not on the right side of history. No, but we've come a long way. You take you really take the good with the bad. They brought they had the first scenes with African Americans on. On film where they were equal to white people, but we also may have had some KKK jokes, which also was a thing that may have been involved. So, again, just once in a while, just though. once in a while. So, you know, okay. <laughs> all things considered, <laughs> okay, just to bring you down, just to let, just Thank to you. put a bit of a, you know, uh, a sour taste in your mouth. So, this was not the only revival, obviously, the, of the original. There was an attempt at an arri- at a revival in 1977 by Norman Lear. Who is the creator of the Jeffersons, All in the Family, Good Times, Sanford and Son. So mm-hmm. a heavy, heavy hitter. He tried to revolve the Rascals franchise and he taped three pilot episodes. They were not bought, but they did include uh, a cameo by Gary Coleman. So hmm. you've got Norman Lear, a heavy hitter, has Gary, Gary Coleman. Coleman in it. No one's buying it. That to me feels That's like a crazy. giant misstep, like right. a missed opportunity. What could have been? I feel like that was a successful series waiting to happen. There was a Little Rascals animated series in the eighties, which was short lived. The more, the more, the more you 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 die, you pull oh, it back. Stop! A bit. <laughs> stop it! <laughs> it's just kind of bummer news. Not as bad as the other ones, but it said Eugene Lee, who acted on the original shorts, played Porky. Um, he sued Hanna Barbera Productions for nearly two million dollars, claiming that the animated character was a violation of his likeness rights. He was joined in the lawsuit by the kid who played Spanky, the kid who played Butch, the kid who played Woim, also uh, Alfalfa, Darla, and Buckwheat. Uh, well, they were already deceased, but they included them in the lawsuit. Okay. It was found that Hanna Barbera's license from uh, King World did not include the likeness rights of the former child actors, and the case was settled out of court. So, okay, they threw some money at them. They may not have been featured in the 1994 remake, but right. they got a little bit. But you know, guess what? They got their beaks wet back in the 80s. Okay. What I mentioned before, there is a sequel called The Little Rascals Save the Day, which is also on Netflix. Oh, really? It is. And I have watched it and boy, oh, yo, it's, okay. it's something. Uh, it's You uh, can't strike lightning twice. You can't. And this or is, lightning can't strike twice. This certainly, Either way. <laughs> lightning and striking, it's not Yeah, happening. it's not going to happen. No. Fool me once. Yeah, shame on both of us. Um, so this definitely feels like a straight to DVD, although it's 2014, so it's not that long ago. Oh, wow. But it feels like when you would have gone to like Walgreens and they had like the DVD. Yes. Band, and it's like, oh, there was a second movie. Right. Like this is what it felt like, basically. OK. It featured French Stewart. Oh, God. From the you Rock and the Sun. You don't have to say anymore. <laughs> Doris Roberts, who was the uh, one of the mothers in a- a Christmas Vacation. Yeah. And, and Everybody Loves yeah. Women. So she's in it, too. And a cameo by Bug Hall, Alfalfa himself from the 90s movie. French Stewart's also in a Home Alone sequel. So Incredible. I think he just is snatching up sequels. If, if they're making a, a sequel to a kid's movie, they're at least he's getting a phone call. But here's various. your warning. Yes. If French Stewart's in a sequel, <laughs> uh, abandon, maybe, maybe. abandon ship. <laughs> Do you have any least favorite scenes? I don't like it. I said, honestly, no. Pretty much any movie I can say, okay, we didn't need that, or that was too long. I don't have that with this movie. This movie at an hour 40, maybe, but an hour 20, it's not, nope. it has nothing. It has nothing to spare. I think it's great. It's, uh, I believe it is inaccurately rated and reviewed for a 21% or a Couldn't 45. Couldn't agree more. I, if you're at Rotten Tomatoes, what what is your review? What's the percentage you give it? Because six... We know IMDb, it's a kid's movie from the 90s. It's getting a six point something. Right. But if you're at Rotten Tomatoes, what feels more appropriate? I think 60 to 70%. 60 is where you start the conversation. Yeah. You have to start at 60. And I agree. I'm willing to accept 70s and possibly higher with the right merits. Same. So yeah, 20% is, is abysmal. No. Do we recommend it? I don't even have to ask the question. Absolutely. Of course we do. Unless that means for some reason you have to watch the sequel, then maybe, maybe... And just watch the beginning. <laughs> and, and take a nap. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for listening. 
Please follow, rate, review, like, and subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else you listen to podcasts. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook, and tune in next week when we review another cinematic masterpiece from our childhood. Until then, nothing beats a buck and a duck. <laughs>